So I want to open it up for some questions. Anybody have some questions? Yeah. All right. So, so why now are like gluten allergies, um, peanut allergies coming more popular? Like, is it you know, is it you say like you know you can R what you eat? Well, some develop at a young age, like as their babies. So, is it prenatal? Is it something in the mother's diet? The genetic? And why now? Um, is this on? Yeah. Um, I, as far as genetics, there's probably some genetic component to it, but it is more environmental. <coughs> Even at a young age, they're exposed at some level. There's an inflammatory insult of some sort, maybe prenatally, uh, that caused your immune system to rev up. And now it's waiting for something. So the first thing it sees that has anything close to a match, it's going to glom on to. But that whole idea of allergies is another one of those things that is just skyrocketing with this inflammatory diet that we have. And so it's a very good question, and it's, it, it's very, very true, and it's very compromising. Having allergies is like having a disability. You know, these, you go outside, you can't play outside with the other kids. I mean, and it, it really is that inflammatory diet. And even those folks that have bad peanut allergies, if you do these steps to create a good microbiome, over time, they're not going to be so reactive. And the problem with allergies is that you now set the stage for a second allergy and a third allergy. And so you really, if someone has allergies, that should be a red flag to say, this person needs a change because other things are falling. Not just allergies, but these other diseases as well are to fall. So it's a very good question. Okay. So I, I guess, what are your views on like, kind of the whole and then, could you just tell us what a normal day of eating is for you, like your breakfast, lunch, dinner? All right. I eat a lot, by the way. Um, my breakfast is three eggs. By the way, if there is a heaven, and if there is a banquet table in front of God, eggs is going to be right there. It used to be sour cream and onion potato chips for me. <laughs> With some french fries. So, but, but eggs are on the, eggs are one of the best things you can be doing for yourself. Of course, you want to get farm-raised and organic, organic, organic. I never used to believe in organic until I started reading studies. Organic is real, folks, and we need to foster that environment, and we need to have a governmental state uh, certification that means something, that when something is organic, it is organic, so that you know what you're getting. Um, but, uh, so you, you mentioned paleo diet. Paleo diet is one type of diet to follow. There are some, and it's a good one, but there are some things that can be added to it, just like a vegetarian. Vegetarian is a pretty good diet, but it's really tough to get all these things, especially when you look at zinc and different, you know, different uh, minerals. Um, you gotta have meat. Meat does do things for you. Um, <coughs> without getting into too many details, the best diet incorporates a little bit of meat farm-raised, you know, organic as much as you can, and then a very wide variety of colorful vegetables. Um, and some foods, you know, I, I don't want to get too far into this, but some foods are best. It, it, each food kind of has its own characteristic, and each person has a different response to those foods. It's really um, Ayurvedic medicine in, of uh, India. Um, they try to differentiate people based on certain characteristics, and there's four major and seven minor variations, so that all comes together and creates many different types that you should eat this way, you should eat this way, and if you follow that, it actually makes, you, you actually do better and feel better that way. And we're, we're kind of reinventing that now with our biochemical assays, finding out that indeed there are people that, that, that absorb things, uh, absorb food differently. Um, and uh, have I answered that question or is there something else to that? Lunch. Oh, which one? Lunch. So, not just eggs. I more than eggs. I, I have um, I have a bunch of as many mushrooms as my wife wants to cut up. Uh, in fact, there's a study done that three ounces of mushrooms a day and one cup of green tea reduces breast cancer by fifty percent. This is this is real. These, these are food is medicine. You know, food is. Food is what we want here, not, not chemicals. Um, so I have, uh, uh, I chop up a bunch of uh, red pepper. I don't like green pepper. 
um, yellow pepper, a bunch of onions, onions are onions. That's on the same banquet table. Onions, onions, garlic, they're just wonderful for you. And then I, I do something wrong, which is I have to have a, 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 a sausage, the maple kind, with my meal. I can't find a, an organic one yet, but when I do, I, I'll be a happy boy. So that's my breakfast. Uh, lunch is always a salad with, with as many dark colored things added in as I can. And we've gotten into some, you know, beet greens and all this stuff. And it's like, well, okay, well, I'm going to do it and see what it is. And dandelion. I went out and picked dandelion leaves one time. Before I sprayed it, of course, in Roundup. <laughs> but, um, I, I picked dandelion leaves. I said, okay, well, they're talking about dandelion. Okay, I'm going to give it a try. I got a bunch of dandelions. It took a while because there's some small little suckers. And I put it, and I, I fried it up in some olive oil, and I put some cayenne pepper in and all that stuff, got it kind of, they said get it crunchy, and my God, it was pretty good. You know, I don't do that every day, but uh, it's interesting, you know, it actually worked. Uh, for supper, we, we have again, I, I, the, the key is to have a plate that is 70% vegetables. And if you're going to have meat, the thickness of your palm, and as big as your palm, not your fingers, but your palm. That's the amount of meat that gives you those, those really good nutrients. Fish, chicken, you know, everything has its nuance, right? I mean, do you want to have fish from a mercury-infested uh, pool? Do you want to eat um, farm-raised fish that's fed corn that changes their omega-3 into omega-6? That's what happens to beef, by the way. Eating farm-raised or uh, pasture-raised beef Per gram has more omega-3, and omega-3, of course, is good because it's anti-inflammatory. It regulates your neurotransmitters. It does all things good for you. In fact, the majority of your brain is made of omega-3. Take omega-3. You get that one? Take, take omega-3. So omega-3 is converted to the omega-6 because we feed our cows corn. But if you have a farm-raised beef, per gram it has more omega-3 than wild-caught Alaskan salmon. And salmon is kind of the, the go-to when people talk about food-based omega-3. So there's ways to eat. And, I, and, and I, I give this talk to you not expecting that you can go and follow everything and everything's going to be great and wonderful. It's just a raise an awareness. And you got to do this yourself, folks. The government is not doing this for you. 1993, they came out with this food pyramid. 70% grains, 70% carbohydrates, Really? <laughs> Within 10 years, we doubled our rate of diabetes type 2. 10 years. We had ne I had never seen 8th uh, graders or 5th graders with diabetes type 2. I was seeing that now because they listened to the government that said it's good. Well, who told the government that? Bill's very, you know, excuse me, I shouldn't mention names of places. <laughs> big food, big agriculture. Because it's money. When it, when it comes down to it, it's money. How can we do this? One of the other travesties that happened back in the 60s, they all got together and they said, how can we make people eat more of our product? And they said, make it convenient. Mm -hmm. So they cooked it all for you. They put all these chemicals into it. So all you got to do is you got to add water and put it in the microwave and you're a cook. The other thing is, Re-establishment of joy of cooking. I'm trying to get into this now. I'm trying to make meals for my wife, etc. Take take time to, to I don't know the zen of cooking. Introduce it to your kids and to your loved ones. Have fun. Do have some fun. Have a glass of wine. By the way, wine is on the menu, folks. It's okay. <laughs> but uh, so I, I hope I answered that question. And also, Darcy, you asked a question about gluten. And gluten, that's a real thing, and that's one of the problems to it, because 10,000 years ago, of course, it was first cultivated that we had wheat. The wheat at that time was very much different than it is right now. And, and if we were to eat that, if you had gluten sensitivity right now, and you were to eat that, you probably wouldn't have a problem. But gluten sensitivity is another one of those things where we have changed and modified this wheat so much that every one of us reacts to wheat. Every one of us has antibodies to it. There's just only measure one to three of them when we look for gluten allergies. And only one out of eight people with gluten, obvious gluten sensitivity, has bowel changes. You know, the other seven have other things like brain fog or concentration. They just don't feel a lot of energy. 
you don't know you've got, they've estimated at least 30% of our population has a problem with gluten, but everybody has reactivity to the wheat part. There's many, many antigens in wheat. We react to them. So get rid of wheat. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, wheat's a mainstay. I remember eating called Chocula watching Hogan's Heroes, you know. I, mean, I was fed this stuff. We were told it's okay. It's fortified. Right? So, yeah, I don't want to scare you too much. A lot of fat, by the way, a lot of avocados, eat a lot of nuts. That's good stuff. Do you follow the 20 grams a month, or do you, do you do more than that per day? 20%, 20, 20 you mean? 20, 20 grams of carbs, do you? Is that how you do um, it? So it's very you difficult. Everything you read, the keto diet, yep. is yep. 20 grams. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm probably that or better. Um, not to say that I'm a good boy, but this one I think I'm wrong. Um, because we really we don't we don't do any of that stuff. I you know I only eat uh, bread under duress. You know, <laughs> in other words, when I'm on the road and all I got is McDonald's. I get the wrap. I don't have the Big Mac like I really want. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really. I mean, I, we eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of vegetables, and we try to we try to take the skin off chicken and, um, and eat as much uh, farm raised as we can find. We get we get uh, <coughs> Kerrygold is another again. Kerrygold doesn't know me, but Kerrygold is available at Walmart now. It's in different things, and that is uh, that is butter that is uh, farm raised organic. As much as you want of Kerrygold, put it on everything. Butter is on the menu. Butter is good for you. The people that have the highest percentage of butter intake have the lowest rates of heart attacks. So, and that's another thing that we were lied to before with this whole cholesterol fiasco. Don't eat butter, eat margarine. Margarine is one molecule away from plastic. It didn't make a good plastic, so they fed it to animals, and animals didn't die, so they fed it, put some colorant in it, and fed it to humans. Bad news. We're dying because of it.